This is Dugaris Essays, that is two, three page opinion pieces on topics such as species dominance, the global state, politics, femtotech, religion, society, and education. Written by and read aloud by Prof. Dr. Hugo Dugaris. This is essay number eight, entitled Seeking the Sputnik of AI, that's artificial intelligence. Hugo de Garris interviews Ben Gersel on AGI, that's artificial general intelligence, open cog, and the future of intelligence. Now, uh, this next paragraph was written by Ben Gersel, a good friend of mine. A couple of months after I, that's Ben Gersel, interviewed my good friend and sometime research collaborator Hugo de Garris on some of his wilder theoretical ideas. Uh, and there's, an, uh, there's a, URL, a, a, U, a URL supplied. H plus magazine, that's one word, dot com slash uh, 2011 slash 01 slash 18 slash is dash God dash and dash alien dash mathematician slash. He suggested it would be interesting to play a role reversal game and ask me some interview questions about my AGI research and my views on the future of humanity and intelligence. His questions were good ones, so I happily obliged. I'm having trouble scrolling. One of the disadvantages of living in China is the internet infrastructure is primitive. So there are just too many Chinese on the internet and everything slows down hopelessly. Hugo, that's... I'm about to uh, pose a question to Ben. Hugo, <coughs> about five years ago, I was staying at a mutual friend's apartment in Washington, D.C., just before moving full-time to China. In other words, 2006. At the time you took the view that it would not be necessary to have a full knowledge of the human brain to be able to create a human level artificial intelligence. You thought it could be done years earlier using a more humanly engineered approach rather than a reverse engineering the brain approach. What are your thoughts on that attitude now, five years down the road? So that would be 2011. So <laughs> time passes. Ben. Wow, was that really five years ago, question mark? Egads, time flies. But my view remains the same, dot, dot, dot. Neuroscience has advanced impressively since then, but more in terms of its understanding of the details than in its holistic vision of the brain. We still don't know exactly how neurons work. We still don't know how concepts are represented in the brain, nor how reasoning works, etc. We still can't... <coughs> image the brain with simultaneously high spatial and temporal precision, etc. Artificial general intelligence hasn't advanced as, vis as visibly as neuroscience since then, but I think it has advanced. The pursuit of AGI now exists as a well-defined field of research, which wasn't the case back then, and many advances have been made in specific areas of importance for AGI. Deep learning models of perception, probabilistic logical inference, automated program learning, scalable graph knowledge stores, and so forth. We also have a vibrant open source AGI project, OpenCog, which I hope will take off in the next few years the same way Linux did a while back. Both approaches have a significant, have a significant ways to go before yielding human level AGI but I'd say both have the same basic strengths and weaknesses they did five years ago, having advanced steadily, but not dramatically. Hugo. So, which approach do you feel will build human-level AI first? Your symbolic engineered approach, or reverse engineering of the brain, and why? Ben, I wouldn't characterize my approach as symbolic, I think it's a bit of a loaded and misleading term given the history of AI. My approach involves a system that learns from experience. It does include some probabilistic logic rules that are fairly described as symbolic, but it also includes dynamics very similar to attractor neural nets. 
and we're now integrating a deep learning hierarchical perception system, etc. It's an integrative experiential learning based approach, not a typical symbolic approach. Anyway, quibbles over terminology aside, do I think an integrative computer science approach or a brain simulation approach will get there faster? Question mark. I think that an integrative computer science approach will get there faster unless this approach is starved of funding and attention while the brain simulation approach gets a lot of money and effort. I think we basically know how to get there via the integrative computational science approach now. Whereas to follow the neuroscience approach we'd need first to understand an awful lot more about the brain than we can do with current brain measurement technology. But still, even if one of the current AGI projects, like the OpenCog project I co-founded, is truly workable, it will take dozens of man-years of effort to get to human-level AGI by one of these routes. That's not much in the historical time scale, but it's a non-trivial amount of human effort to pull together without serious backing from government or corporate sources. Right now, OpenCog is funded by a ragtag variety of different approaches, supplemented by the wonderful efforts of some unpaid volunteers. But if this situation continues for OpenCog and other integrative computer science-based AGI, artificial general intelligence, projects, progress won't be all that fast, and it's not clear which approach will get there first. What I'm hoping is that once OpenCog or some other project makes a sufficiently impressive AGI demonstration, there'll be a kind of Sputnik moment for AGI and the world will suddenly wake up and see that powerful AGI as a real possibility. And then the excitement and the funding will pour in and we'll see a massive acceleration of progress. If this AGI Sputnik moment happened in 2012 or 2013 or 2014 for example, then, remember this was written in 2011 uh, for example, then the integrative computer science approach would leave the brain simulation approach in the dust because by that time we almost certainly still won't be able to measure the brain with simultaneously high spatial and temporal precision so we still won't be able to form an accurate and detailed understanding of how human thinking works. Hugo. As machines become increasingly intelligent how do you see human politics unfolding? What are your most probable scenarios? Which do you feel is the most probable, Ben? I see human organizations like corporations and governments becoming gradually more and more dependent on machine intelligence so that they no longer remember how they existed without it. I see AI and allied technologies as leading to a lot of awfully wonderful things. A gradual decrease in scarcity, meaning an end to poverty. The curing of diseases, including the diseases comprising aging, leading ultimately to radical life extinction. Increased globalization and eventually our world state in some form, maybe something vaguely like the European Union extended over the whole planet and then beyond the planet. The emergence of a sort of global brain, a distributed emergent intelligence fusing AIs and people and the net into a new form of mind never before seen on Earth. Increased openness and transparency which will make government and business run a lot more smoothly and will also trigger big changes in individual and collective human psychology. David Brin's writings on surveillance, that's S-O-U-S, -S, which is French for under, so undervalence rather than... Uh, uh, surveillance are quite relevant here, by the way. For example, the Transparent Society. Also, you can look at WikiLeaks and the current Mideast revolutions as related to this now, 2011, remember. But exactly how all this will play out is hard to say right now, because so much depends on the relative timings of various events. There will be advances in artificial experts, AI systems that lack human-like autonomy and human-level general intelligence, but still help solve very important and difficult problems. And then there will be advances in true, autonomous, self-understanding AGI. Depending on which of these adva advances faster, we'll see different sorts of future scenarios unfold. If we get super powerful AGI first, then if all goes well, the AGI will be able to solve a lot of social problems in one fell swoop. 
If we get a lot of artificial experts first, then we'll see problems gradually get solved and society gradually reorganized. And then finally, a true AGI will come into this reorganized society. Hugo. In a recent email to me, you said, I don't think it's productive to cast the issue as species dominance. Why do you feel that, Ben? In a species dominance war, a battle between humans and AI machines is one way that the midterm future could pan out, but we have no reason to think it's the most likely way. And it's possible that foc focusing on this sort of outcome too much, as many of our science fiction movies have, just because it makes good theatre, may even increase the odds of it happening. Sometimes life follows fiction because the movies someone sees and the books they read help shape their mind. I find Ray Kurzweil a bit over-optimistic in his view on the future, but maybe his over-optimism over -optimism is performing a valuable service by placing the optimistic vision of a kinder, gentler singularity in people's minds. Maybe he'll help that kind of future to come about. I'd imagine he has thought about this in this way alongside other perspectives. Another possibility, for example, is that humans may gradually fuse with machines and let the machine component gradually get more and more intelligent, so that first we have cyborgs with a fairly equal mix of human and machine, and then gradually the machine takes over and becomes the dominant portion. In that case, we could feel ourselves become superhuman god minds rather than having a losing war with superhuman god minds that are external to ourselves. There would be no species dominance debate, but rather a continuous transition from one species into another. And quite possibly the superhuman cyborgs and god mind AIs would allow our legacy humans to continue to exist alongside themselves, just as we allow ants to keep crawling around in the national park and bacteria to course inside those ants. Of course, you could point out that some human beings and some political organizations would be made very mad, meaning angry, by the preceding few paragraphs and would argue to wipe out all the nasty, risky techno geeks who entertain crazy ideas like gradually becoming superhuman god mind cyborg AIs. So could there be conflicts between people who like this sort of wild, ambitious, futurist vision and those who think it's too dangerous to play with? Of course there could. But focusing on the potential consequences of such conflict seems pointless to me because they're so unknown at this point and there are so many other possibilities as well. Maybe this sort of conflict of opinion will someday, somewhere, unfold into a violent conflict or maybe it won't. Maybe Ray Kurzweil is right that the advocates of gradual cyborgization will have vastly more advanced capabilities of defense, offense, and organization than their opponents, so that the practical possibility of a really violent conflict between the cosmos and the Terrans, to use your terminology, won't be there. Won't be there. After all, right now, There is a conflict between people who want to roll back to medieval technology and attitudes, Al-Qaeda, and modern technological society. And who's winning? They knock down the World Trade Center. Well, <laughs> this is Ben's belief. Okay. Uh, probably aided in many ways by their connections with the Saudis, who are wealthy because of selling oil to technological beliefs and are shielded somewhat by their close connections with the US power elite, for example the Bush family. But they're coming nowhere close to winning their war on technological progress and cultural modernization. Our weapons are better and our memes are stickier. When their kids find out about modern culture and technology, a lot of them are co-opted to our side. When our kids find out about the more violent and anti-technology strains of fundamentalist Islam, relatively few are tempted. My guess is this sort of pattern will continue. Hugo, are you mystified by the nature of consciousness? Ben, not at all. Consciousness is the basic ground of the universe. It's everywhere and every when, and beyond time and space, in fact. It manifests, it manifests differently in different sorts of systems, 
So human consciousness is different from rock consciousness or dog consciousness, and AI consciousness will be yet different. A human being like AI will have consciousness somewhat similar to that of a human being, whereas a radically superhumanly intelligent AI will surely have a very different sort of conscious experience. To me, experience comes first, science and engineering second. How do I know about atoms, molecules, AI and computers and Hugo de Garris and the English language? I know because these are certain patterns of arrangement of my experience, because these are certain patterns that have arisen as explanations of some of my observations and so forth. The experiential observations and feelings come first and then the idea and model of the physical world comes after that, built out of observations and feelings. So the idea that there's this objective world out there independent of experience and we need to be puzzled about how experience fits into it seems rather absurd to me. Experience is where it all starts out and everything else is just patterns of arrangement of experience. These patterns of course being part of experience too. Dot, dot, dot. You could call this <coughs> Buddhistic or panpsychistic or whatever but to me it's just the most basic sort of common sense. So while I recognize their entertainment value and their possible value in terms of providing the mind's muscles a cognitive workout, I basically see all the academic and philosophical arguments about consciousness as irrelevancies. The fact that consciousness is a conundrum within some common construals of the modern scientific worldview tells us very little about consciousness and a lot about the inadequacies of this world view. I think I'll stop here. It's very long and I'm running out of memory, so I'll split this, this uh, rather long essay into parts. So I'll stop here. Ciao.